Greetings, welcome. Very happy to be back. Uh, and uh, I am a little bit sleepy, <laughs> traveling uh, many hours, but I'll try to keep awake. Um, so today, the topic is moving beyond fear. The ultimate protection is within you. So moving beyond fear, the ultimate protection is within you. So first, uh, I wanted to maybe speak a little bit about what is fear. I think the fear is something that we all experience this in our life. And sometimes we have very strong experiences, some have very mild experiences, something that I don't think any human being can skip. So, so what is a fear? How we experience this fear? Is there anything we can do about it? We can overcome, transcend it. And we can, can we become and uh, strong and feel confidence? So the answer, simple answer is yes. Absolutely. And uh, if you think about like in a teaching, like particularly like in a form of in Burn Buddhism teachings, some there's a, some a notion called a fear of emptiness. I want you to speak a little bit about that. Fear of emptiness or tongpi jipa. Uh, so what, what does that mean? At least the way I understand what does that mean is that generally in our life, we, we always have the space, the unbounded space, the unbounded sacred space the infinite possibility of who we are, we obscure that, we disconnect from that. And we, instead of connecting with that boundless space, infinite awareness, we lose the connection to that mother, we call it mother, and we identify with something else. We're trying to identify with, uh, trying to feel, uh, lacking a love, and trying to identify uh, in relationship with somebody, family, friends, husband, wife, in order to experience, in order to fill that empty space with some love. We're trying to find a relationship. Or, or that empty space, in order to try to fill that, some sense of with confidence and strength, we're trying to find some kind of secure job that we feel you are protected, you are secure, you are okay. Or finding some kind of, I mean, even the insurances or f friends and families that you are connected, well connected with people that you feel protected. So some sense of that we identify with something who we are not. And identifying with something who we are not Temporarily, it gives us some kind of a confidence, some kind of protection, some kind of feeling, a sense of safe, and uh, okay, then we feel maybe less fear. But ultimately, all of these, eventually something happens to it, we, we lose who protects us, our, like our parents, or, or, we, or somebody leaves you, or you divorce, or you leave someone with whom you have this connection and experiences of love for such a long time, you identify with that, and suddenly after many years, 20, 30, 40 years, this relationship of some sense of comfort and love suddenly disappears. So what you have identifying with for this long term, long time in relationship with somebody, suddenly that person disappears, you have empty space there. So you have empty space out there because that person is no longer there. And you have a very empty experiences of emptiness in you 
because the one who was identifying with that joy or love is no longer supported by that person. So you feel fear of that emptiness. You are afraid of that empty space where this person was very long time there, gone, where you have identifying with something very long time, no longer supported. There is this empty, scary space. So that is some sense of fear of emptiness. Of course, basically fear of emptiness is emptiness that what you have been identifying with something which is, which is not really inherently there or which is truly there, which is kind of you have created in your mind, when in time comes, when that goes, it becomes a very empty. And when you have to experience, face that, when you have to experience that, you get lost and you become very fearful. So that is some sense of, I think it's like a tongpi jipa or fear of emptiness. Or another, another example will be if somebody is working for one company for 30 years, 40 years, or one specific kind of job for a very long time, and that job, what you do is what you identify with, what you do, what you're earning is you kind of feel some stability, some connection. When that, when you retire, when you, when you lose the job or when you let go of the job, of course, when you, when you, when you're fired, it's hard. When you retire, maybe a little easier. When you let go, it may be easier than that. But either case, in any case, you let go of that. The connection is no longer there. Then certainly, again, that identity as I am a lawyer, I am a doctor, I am a teacher, I am, uh, I don't know, healer, I am whatever job that you identify with, which what you do, what you do is hold who you are not. But you have been identifying that, not only identifying that, but through that you are identifying a lot of things, sense of security, sense of building a social circle, a friends, feeling safe, feeling powerful, feeling loved. You're feeling many qualities through that job, through that what you do, when that is gone, then you, once again, you have to face the experiences of that emptiness, which you have been identifying, which who you are not, but the transition, it's very hard. That is like another example of fear of emptiness. So basically experiences of emptiness is one, the most important one, is emptiness in the self. Self that you're identifying, you have let go of that by letting go of what you, what you do, who you're with, and that sense of empty self is hard to face. Like just sense of totally void there. You are no one. I am no one. I was someone. I was, I have all these social circles. I feel safe and secure with what I do and it's all of they're gone. Or even in a family like you, 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 with your children or your parents, places where we experience some sense of love. It's hard. I know number of you who are listening here, please, if you wanted to say yes or you wanted to make a comment, if, if you're currently, if you are experiencing that, somehow experiencing, f need to face, have to face, and experiencing this sense of voidness in your life, in terms of its meaning, in terms of your sense of self, in terms of who you feel you are, as your role, moral roles, or in terms of something that you lost someone, something, and facing that. 
So if you look very closely at that experience, you have definitely maybe lost someone or lost something like your job or lost some kind of identity, but you cannot be lost. So you have to understand that I cannot be lost. In the Dzogchen teaching, it says you can never find yourself because you don't search for yourself. You can never find yourself because you have never lost yourself. Only thing is just you have to realize I was just too connected with something else than where I was supposed to be connected to who I, my being rather than what I do, rather than what I'm trying to become. So you are not what you do, you are that unbounded infinite possibility. So this sense of recognition, I think it's a very, very important here. Or sometimes even in the worst case, some people, like uh, I think those, those of you are, if that is the case in your case, I acknowledge that. Maybe if you want to make a comment about it, you're welcome. Is that sometimes we identify not only someone or what you or job, the wonderful job that you have, but in the worst case, you identify with your conditions, your weakness, your pain, your sickness. Like people will say, I am sick. You identify with that. I, I can't do it. I am not good. I am not good. Think about how many places that you, you feel you're not good. How many times you say that, think that, feel that. Nobody's saying anything. You're saying it. And what, what are the consequences of that? When you say that, what are you saying to yourself? I am not good. I am not strong. I am not capable. I am weak. I can't. I am sick. And you are kind of, in some sense, you are identifying a sense of self with these conditions. And when you identify with these sense of conditions, they become causes of bad health, bad mood, stress, tension, draining, exhaustion, depression. They become cause of that because you are this energetically, you're repeating these things in yourself. Maybe, I'm not saying that we, we are able to do everything. But you don't have to repeat that mantra. You can say, I wish I can do it. I might be able to do it. I'm going to try to do it. I can do it. I will do it. I love to do it. I think it will be interesting to do it. I'm sure I have the potentiality to do it. This sense of optimistic, energetic, lively hope, cultivating some sense of confidence. This is what we need. This is what we need to encourage each other. So what is fear? Fear is some sense experiencing this emptiness of self. without the warmth and awareness. I repeat this again. So what is fear? Fear is experiencing emptiness of self without the awareness, warmth, and sense of perfection, sense of completeness. Because what in the teaching, what it says, ultimately it says, 
You are unbounded space. You are this infinite light and awareness. You are this genuine warmth. The Buddha nature is within you. You are capable. You have potentiality to many things. But what is the most important thing in that boundless space, in that absence of ego, rather than producing sense of fear, a feeling illuminated. The sacred space needs to be illuminated by being aware of it. So I'm not just a lawyer who is looking all the negative consequences. I am also a father, a mother, who just cares about loving. I love you. Three words. To anyone in family, but not having that personality, identity of lawyer interfering, able to say those words, feel those words, able to express those words. There are so many people. It's just a very, very simple thing. I love you. They cannot just say it. Probably they cannot just feel it. People, probably they don't say enough of that. Because something, another identity, in some cases, fear, whatever it is. So these experiences are there. So I repeat this again. This is very important to understand. The fear is experiencing, experiencing, facing and experiencing emptiness of self. Fear is facing, experiencing emptiness of self as a result of losing something, someone, job, family, situation, which you have been identifying so long time, suddenly when that situation changes, you are displayed. You, you are just facing this void of yourself who you thought you were, which is who you are not. In the teaching, in some sense, when you feel that, that's a great opportunity to recognize that space. You didn't choose, certain, the life give you that space. Somebody forced you to feel that. Karmic conditions are exhausted, you put you in that situation. You have to feel strong enough to say, this space is a new space. I need to, to illuminate this space. I need to, to be aware of this space. I'm not just a lawyer anymore. I can be anybody. I can be a surfer. I can serve. I can get a mountain climber. I can climb. This infinite possibility exploring this perf perfection of self, awareness of self and perfection of self with a, such a warmth quality. You are, it's like an opportunity to discovering new you by somebody's forces taking away the old you, which you would have never let it go, but somebody took it away. Thank them. Thank the situation. Look at it as opportunity. Another example will be like this sense of uh, fear of death. Fear of death, losing this body, losing a single identity. That's exactly what it is. What is the fear of death? Fear of death is very closely connected with identity related via appearances, your image, physical image, bodily image, image of form, image of this identity, family. These images, collective images, where you feel a sense of you, the fear of that, this is what you're going to lose. So I'm going to lose who I am, but you're wrong. 
You're not going to lose who, who you are. You can never lose who you are. That's the good news. You can mess up a lot of things, but you can never mess up who you are. You can lose yourself in some sense of identity, but you cannot really truly lose yourself. There's no way to lose it yourself. So, and then also, I think in some sense of this, uh, the fear of unknown. Because when you, when you lose a job, when you lose a relationship, when you lose certain kind, some kind of identity that you are identifying with, and they produce fear because they, they make you feel uncertainty. In life, many situations, you feel uncertainty. I don't know what is going to happen in my life. That uncertainty is what produces a fear. The fear is un because of you don't know. In a way that instead of thinking that way, you need to think, well, what I, what I don't know, that means it opens up. Not happening one thing that you do know, but it opens up everything that you don't know to happen possibility, the infinite possibility. And any situation in our life, in a practice is when we think about opening up, that's what it means. Every situation where you feel some kind of limiting yourself and feeling close, that's the place you need to open up. It's very personal, very experiential, but directly related with the ancient wisdom, tradition, knowledge. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that's infinite possibility. So I'm so hopeful to this infinite possibility, a spontaneous perfection. Rather than there's nothing, it's empty, it's end. No, it's the beginning. So in a way, every fear is ending or close to ending or preparing to ending something. And that is a great opportunity to begin something properly, right way, which will help oneself deep sense of development. Now, the next thing I want to say, talk a little bit about this, the second line, the ultimate protection is within you. So when you are fearful, what do you do? When you are fearful, what do you do? Where you go for protection? Of course, we go out. Usually we're trying to um, talk with somebody, somebody who we think they have a skill, means, knowledge, power, resources. We go outside. And sometimes for temporary situation, we feel they are able to help. You feel, you feel gratitude uh, that you feel you, are, you got help. But then some point you realize there's nothing outside can help when the moment come to end something. And ending something, there's nothing wrong about it because it is also a beginning of something. It's a cycle, it's a change, it's a continu continuity. It means it's a life. So, so what is there in, in terms of the uh, protection, what we call inner refuge. We also call ultimate refuge, Tartu ki chamro, or Tartu ki chamne, the ultimate refuge which is like three kayas within oneself, dharma kaya within oneself, sambhoga kaya within oneself, nirmana kaya within oneself. So basically, if you don't understand these terms, so the enlightened qualities 
it's within oneself. One can also think God is within oneself. The divine is within oneself. The truth is within oneself. Ultimately, what we're trying to achieve is already within oneself. And every religion, every spiritual tradition that exists in the past, is, that arising in this moment, that will arise in the future, every single one of them, even though they all believe there is the best, more better than the other, but they are all simply a, one, a journey toward that big goal big realization. It's just a part of journey that I think is very humbling to think about that my tradition is a part of big journey rather than thinking my tradition is the best. Always kind of some sense of deep sense of feeling that and undermining other tradition even though saying respectful but feeling not feeling still feeling they are less than you. or yours tradition. It's a one part of big journey. So that ultimate refuge, whatever you wanted to call it, but that is within you, something. So all this time that you have been identifying things in your life, people you're with, the work where you do, things that you love, things that you makes you excite, that you identify with, or sometimes worst case, your weakness, your condition that you identify with, none of them will protect you. The one who will protect you is be, which is something beyond all of those things. That is called ultimate refuge within oneself. That is absolutely that's within you. This any given moment that's right now within you. No matter what religion you follow, no matter what school you follow, no, or no matter what discipline that you believe, no matter what other discipline that you argue with, that the essence it's in every single human being. Not one one does not have better and one does not have less. Less, they are all same, and this 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 very 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 moment that we all have equally access to that ultimate protection refuge within oneself. You might feel that, you might want to hope for that, you might want to contemplate on it, you might want to ref reflect on it, you might want to meditate on it, but you do want to pay close attention to that rather than journeying always out, outside yourself. So how do you find that ultimate protection? It's what I always call, that's one, one I think, it's, there's nothing new here, we call three doors, three gates. Your body is one door, the stillness through your body is one door to that ultimate refuge, the silence is another door to that ultimate refuge, protection. Keeping your heart open and focused is another door for that ultimate protection and refuge. And you can always do that any given moment, like right now. Of course, you know, if you look at in our life, we just looking out, doing so many things, change so many things, changing religion, to meditation, teachers, books, experiences, places, food, name, titles. What do you gain out of it? all those things in the end? Nothing. They are all an experiences, hopefully experiences of growth, In the end, journey inward and finding that ultimate refuge is the, I think, the main protection because this is what you're going to need the moment actually you f feel uh, uh, face fear, 
you're going to need that. So, so what I recommend to everybody is basically whenever you are facing fear, be aware of it, reflect on it, that it, the fear is produced, it's, it's kind of threatening some identity and, and you realize that the f place to focus is the stillness in your body that moment, place to focus is the silence in your speech, the spaciousness in your mind or in your heart. And when you do that, connect, rest deeper, connect deeper. And when you do that, eventually it will open door to that boundless sacred space, infinite light awareness, and genuine and pure, warm source of compassion. You feel that, when you feel that, that space that you are afraid of, you will not be afraid of because it's not empty, it's a full, it's a perfection, it's a complete, it's a warm, it's a joyful, it's a source of everything. Everything. Any protection you need will arise as an experience from that source, that moment you need. The moment you need. Like a crystal, crystal, when the cause condition comes together, it shines. But it does not suffer to shine in the dark room. When you leave the crystal in the dark room, it's just, it's just still there, silent there. It doesn't say, I'm so, so much suffering so much, I wanted to shine, I am not able to shine. So you don't have to shine when you don't need to shine. And when you do need to shine, you will shine because cause conditions together and you are simply open enough to allowing it to shine. You don't have to make shine, you have to open to allow it to shine. So every experience in life and hope and confidence qualities will shine through you as experience and protect you and guide you through these fears. So it's like a, so in the simple practices, it's really like a, a learning to rest through three gates, three doors, through your, your own body, your own speech and your own mind. So I hope it was clear and maybe let's do a short meditation and uh, I will just guide, sit comfortably. Bring your full attention to this place, your place, in the moment, at this moment. In your body. Allow your mind to rest in the stillness of your body fully with the trust, with feeling the support of our cyber Sangha. All around the world, we have right now over 360 people watching. Just feel that we are all connected. We are all supporting each other. Feel the support, give the support Allow yourself to fully rest from the fear and its experiences in your body in that stillness. And let it dissolve in that stillness like a snowing in an ocean. 
moment it drops, it melts. Be aware of the second gate or the second door speech. Be aware of the silence. All the fear, dialogue, conversation, chattering, noises of fears, let it all dissolve, rest, dissolve, in the ocean of silence and feel clear and free and rest in that silence peacefully with connection The pain produced by fear, feelings of fear, images of fear, let all this dissolve in the openness, in the spaciousness of your mind, like all clouds dissolving in the clearest sky. And the sky becomes clear, luminous like a crystal clear sky in the desert no one cloud of fear In short, rest your body, rest your speech, rest your heart. Allow the awareness to awake, light to shine in this stillness, silence and spaciousness. Allow that new sense of you arise. Feel that a new sense of you arising beyond transcending fear and arising this new sense of you with confidence, with the playfulness with fearlessness, ready to manifest in the world from, from deep sense of compassion. Feel that, continue.
So thank you. I hope the meditation was helpful. And if you wanted to share your experiences, welcome. Happy to hear. Very happy to see all the familiar faces and also welcome all the new people. This is uh, it clearly uh, the Facebook, it allow us to opportunity to keep quite a regular connection, connect, connected and share some of these thoughts and experiences. And um, if, uh, if I'm able, able to help a little bit, just to make, a, make your day more positive, more manageable, more, more a new perspective, whatever way that I'm able to help, if it's a helpful, at least my intention is there to help and uh, share. Uh, uh, after I've been traveling for 15, 16 hours, uh, totally time zone different and uh, a little sleepy, but, <laughs> but uh, I'm okay. Um, so I'll see you sometime soon and welcome to uh, share your experiences and watch again. Thank you very much. All my love, blessings to all of you.